prepare the air had uh, actually we we actually uh, uh, this is a uh, meter we used okay and I I bought a cheap uh, model but it, it works very well better than some of the expensive ones right now inside you're looking at PM 12.9 because yes. I had a nice air filter and I washed it all the time okay as the activated charcoal up there too but that does not take care of the tiny 150 micron, uh, 150 nanometer part magnetites from motors. Mm -hmm. So you can never look at a motorized system the same way after today. No, I definitely won't. I mean, okay. I'll be going and out that will protect your cars. family, protect your friends once they gain the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So clear the air. I, when, I, I think we can qualify saying we did a lot more than concern about stale air and your PM 2.5. Now, I'll give you some examples. Okay. Yeah, this is a kind of bit, uh, bacteria, for example. Okay, this Pseudomelae uh, uh, bacteria. It's very, uh, it's reasonably common, but you don't hear it in the medical field. Right. Okay? And yet this is very, very dangerous. Uh, 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 a bacteria that will go up your nostril, mm -hmm. and destroy the uh, the tissues around there, and and start their job. Okay, and this happened quite a bit. Okay, so I will let you get the chance to put your hand on this. Okay. This should just give you an example. Okay, how particles. Okay, where do you think you got the bacteria in the air come from? Yeah. They actually can fly around the particle, along with it. Okay, into your nostril. I'll give you another example. I had uh, my hands on it. There's a bacteria called Haemophilus influenza type B, mm -hmm. otherwise abbreviated as HIB. Okay, I, uh, I was uh, working on this project when I was in the United States with a uh, um, uh, that's Bureau of Biologists. Okay. Uh, Food and Drug Administration, NIH Campus, Building 29. We had found, my uh, co-workers had established, okay, through carbon-14, carbon-14 carbon is radioactive. You can label the, part, uh, the bacteria and be able to find out where these, how these uh, particles, HIB, this is the leading cause of meningitis in children. And that's caused from... Yeah, and uh, I was uh, part of the team. Actually, I did all the chemical analysis on the Haemophilus influenza. There are six serotypes, type A through type F. And the HIV uh, is the invasive species. And today, if you go to any Hong Kong clinic or any clinic on Earth, you will be able to see a vaccine made from that chemical that I have uh, uh, done. That's my chip. Uh, <laughs> and this particular particle demonstrated uh, uh, unequivocally that one of the pathways into our nervous menange, uh, menange the, uh, which is the membrane surrounding your brain and your uh, CNS, central nervous system, you know there's a membrane there. Right, yes. Okay? And this membrane can get inflamed through the upper, uh, right underneath your nose and to directly into your membrane. These things will just go in. And I, I, I shown you earlier that uh, the two ways you can go in mm -hmm. there. Okay? And these are real. You can demonstrate it. These particles are very small. These are bacteria. And yet this air, okay, this is little manatite can do the same thing. They're not bacteria, but they can go up into your brain, okay, and locate there, you will see. Uh, let me put, demonstrate this way. Let's say this is a, this is a uh, nerve system, this is a uh, nerve, right? This okay. is another, we call a neuron, okay. okay? Part of the thing about the brain. This is another neuron. The two of them have to communicate with each other. Right. Between this communication dendrite, okay, this little hand, they have to handshake through chemicals. And you got this millions, hundreds, thousands of particles that are little magnetite blocking them. 
No wonder people get uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. This is absolutely the last thing you wanted to know. So, but, but it blocks the chemical but it, it, Well, there were more work need to be done. Okay. But uh, intuitively, you know this is dangerous. The factual facts, you can see, okay, there is a link, okay? And as a uh, good scientist always said, more work needs to be done. Of course. Okay, otherwise they run out of funding. Now, I have, so in your mind, you, uh, you are sure that uh, now you understand mm -hmm. where we head, right? How dangerous can it be? Extremely dangerous. Very dangerous. A lot more than Most people would not realize. You go into the world today, I don't care where, especially underdeveloped countries, where they, they suffer because there are rich countries, poor countries, okay, differences. These differences is a finance. What do the rich country do? They stop manufacturing things they don't want to do in their own country. Sometimes it's a little bit more than money, but if you, a businessman always follow the money, they go to pollute underdeveloped countries in such a dramatic scale that is unethical. I mean, look at Beijing. Yeah, unethical. And what ticked me off a little bit is every time an article is written, they always say it's underdeveloped country, which is just not proper because what about China? What about um, Indonesia? They're different scale. Uh, now they're turning towards Vietnam, okay, and I'm sure the pollution index is not so forgiven there, okay. All this behavior without a scrubbing system, do we need to go far? Do we need to go far to see what's going on in terms of pollution? No. I can uh, 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 tell you an, a, a close by example. If I carry this meter and walk into the park, which is right up here, right. okay, we call the Kowloon Park. Yes. In Chinese, it's called Kowloon Gong Yun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you go to the McDonald there. Yes. I brought this issue up with the uh, Secretary of Environment, okay, um, earlier this year when they had a, a, one of those meetings to celebrate their success, okay? I find, uh, I told them, this is unforgivable. This is something you, you can't just leave it, let, let it go. Lo and behold, after two weeks later, I found the air over there cleaner, okay? So but then, another weeks, a couple of weeks later, everything goes back to the same old way. Well, what did they do to... I don't know. I don't know what happened behind it, but I went there and checked, okay. The, the problem is there are a lot of little kids that came out from swimming, okay, it's going by that hallway there where McDonald's is located, and that air, that exhaust oil particle that come out from that kitchen oozes right into the proximity, okay. So PM, when you measure the air particles, you ask yourself, what are we smelling? What are, sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't. But what are these particles? If you think of this again, okay, this is outrageous. Because oil, subjected to high temperature, such as those that's made for your, making your french fries. Some of the oil, especially vegetable oil, Okay, I don't have the chemical composition of palm oil they use. Uh, presumably it's not 100% um, uh, saturated fat. Likely there was some unsaturated fat. Unsaturated fat on the oxidation will produce a cancer-causing chemical. It's called HNE, 4-hydroxynonino. It's in the article, right? And this 4-hydroxynonino particle that flies around with the air, oil droplets it will cause cancer. And the kids are just walking through. It will cause cancer and they do it all the time. Now people wonder why 
you know, I, I eat well, I've been careful all my life. How can you be careful when you were surrounded with it? Rich or poor, healthy or unhealthy, you might very well be the unlucky one.